And welcome everyone to the Strumzy community call for Thursday, 21st April. We have the recording running and the first point on the agenda is open PRs and issues. And there are two PRs on the list. The first one is about the, or that's actually the second one there, yeah. The first one is about some changes to the custom resources uh, so that they can be used for native compilation with Graal and still have working serialization and deserialization. It looks like for whatever reason, which I don't really understand. Uh, it doesn't like that we are overriding the, the set spec and get spec method. So uh, this PR tries to fix that so that the compilation works, uh, native compilation uh and originally that's actually why we put it to the agenda originally there was problem that it removed all the with new spec and edit spec methods uh which is quite a big change because they are used around thousand times just in our project not to talk about external users so that was something what i think should have been discussed whether that's acceptable, not acceptable, leaving aside the, the amount of changes needed to actually fix them in all the code. But uh, Ruben, who is working on this, uh, now updated the, uh, Jesus, I can't remember what's the library name, Sandrio, yeah. The Sandrio version, so the new one apparently generates these methods. Uh, so I actually not sure whether there's much to discuss right now. He just needs to work on it and finish it so that it works, but the methods should hopefully stay there. So the impact should not be that big. Anyone has anything to this? Not particularly. I mean, just from briefly looking at it, it looks reasonable enough. Assuming that the tests can pass, then I guess it's not a problem with it. Yeah. And the second PR, which I wanted to raise to attention, that's actually open by me. It's more something to think about. So uh, I think at least Tom Bentley knows about the issue. So Kafka is moving the file stream source and file stream sync connectors out of the class path. And we have the examples using them, which will basically stop working out of the box. Uh, what I'm trying to do here is that I'm adding an example of the, of the Kafka Connect, a second example of Kafka Connect, which used the Kafka Connect build to actually add these, these connectors. And that makes the that makes the connector be available and makes the source connector example work again. Uh, the problem when using the using the connect build is that you need the container registry to use. Uh, so the example is actually using, I don't know if you know that there's this ttl.sh registry where you can basically push anonymously any container and it's kind of a temporary storage. So basically in the tag, you can say something like it should be available one hour, two hours, 24 hours and so on. And it's available there. So this should work in general in most situations. The problem is that because the name of the container is basically the same for all all users, if someone decides to not just use the example, but if someone decides to kind of edit it and remove the file connector and add some additional connectors or something like that, then you actually might have 
multiple users kind of overwriting each other's images a bit. Uh, so it's not perfect, but I think that's the only way how you can actually make it work reasonably smoothly without forcing the users to actually configure some credentials and configure some uh, some private or, or their own registries. And I think the likelihood that something goes wrong is, is I don't think we have thousand people trying it at the same minute. So, so it's probably not that likely that, that there will be too many problems. Given that this is potentially a barrier for people trying out the Kafka Connect support of Strimzy, is it worth us just providing a Strimzy Kafka Connect image that includes the two connectors on Docker Hub or something? I don't think so personally. I think that doesn't really demonstrate how it, this actually demonstrates quite well how it works for the other connectors, right? Yeah, I guess so. I guess it just means that if people don't have a registry of eight, well, I guess they can always use this registry, right? So. Yeah, it's like for, if you just want to demo it, then this is what you can use. If you want to do anything more, then really you should have your own registry or your own Docker Hub account or whatever you prefer to use and, uh, and use that, right? Will people understand the security implications of this though? Because anyone can publish to this image something that looks like a connector that might actually be doing completely different things to the actual Apache connect, uh, connector. And there's no way that we can prevent that. What security implications do you have in the mind, on your mind? Well, I, I don't know. Um, you know, I suppose if they, if people deployed this to their system, there's a chance that somebody could overwrite whatever image they'd pushed and they could accidentally be running something on a dev or staging system that's not what they were expecting to be running. Yeah. I mean, the the the, the practical concept, you know, I, I don't think it's a... I don't think it's a massive problem in reality, but... You never know how people end up using these examples. I don't think it's that easy to to do anything there because what happens is the build image or build the build the image, push it there, and then as far as I know, it's using the digest to pull it. It's not using the the actual name with the tag, it's using the name with the digest. So I don't think it's actually that easy to trick them into pulling something unless they no, actually so we only pull what we copy built. This. I think that should be the case with the current code, yes. It okay. should be um, not too difficult to test that, right? Yeah, it's, it's pretty much just checking whether the, the Kafka Connect deployment deployed afterwards, whether it's using exactly this or whether it's using a digest of the build result. And we build it every time, don't we? It doesn't really query the registry to see whether something exists there. It's using basically just uh, annotations to keep track of state and see whether something new should be built or shouldn't be built. 
So basically, as a result, it always, when you deploy, it always starts with a build, even if the registry would already contain the image, which might correspond to the build. OK. OK, this sounds safer than I first thought. Thank you. It's, it's also a question whether there's any better or more safe alternative, right? I feel like the only alternatives that I can think of would be rather than using a build, um, use an existing thing or configure it to push to the mini cube or something like that registry. I don't know if that's... That, that doesn't do. work, right? Half of the people don't, I, or I actually, apart from our system test, I don't know anyone using the mini cube registry. Yeah, I the OpenShift registry is, is, anyway. is always there, but, but not everyone uses OpenShift, obviously. Yeah. And when someone tries it on something like EKS or AKS or GKE and so on, then they have the registry as a service and not some built-in registry. So you would need to deal with things such as authentication and so on. And I would imagine that projects like, like I know Debezium have all of their connectors in their um, containers, but I wouldn't expect them to add the file ones. So I don't feel like there's necessarily a different image that we would use if we wouldn't provide one ourselves that they could use without building their own. Yeah, if you would want to go with the image part, we would need to build our own. Mm. Do we need to do something to uh, make sure that we're verifying that this still works when we do new releases of Strimzy in case the service goes away in future? <laughs> yeah, that may be a question for the QE folks if they want to use this somehow in the test. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I guess. Either the examples are used in tests or someone used them or they are just, just either working or not working and sooner or later someone starts asking. But you know, nothing stops you from testing it with every RC. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, this is just a PR now, so everyone can think about it a bit more and then comment there if needed. Okay, any other PRs or issues to discuss? Any proposals to discuss? Then I guess next one is the survey draft. Tom, you wanna take it or should I go through it? Uh, well, you're already sharing the screen. So if you can just click on the link and show people the, what the CNCF have come up with. Yeah, you should see it, I hope. No, we yeah, just see, see the minutes it. at the moment. Or at least oh, I'm see. seeing the minutes. <laughs> I can see it. CNCF Strimsy Survey. Can anyone else see it? Is it just Tom McCall? 
É a Tonky Pen. Oh, well, I can, I can make do without seeing it. I don't know why I can't see Jakob sharing it. I can try to stop sharing and share again if it helps. If I find out how to stop sharing. Yeah, I now? can say it again. Nope. But never mind, we can go through them one by one you, and I, I can keep track locally, it's fine. You still see the meeting minutes only? Yeah. I guess you would need to reconnect. I guess it's somehow frozen on your end. I'll I'll just follow it locally, it's fine. As long as we as long as you tell me which question we're talking about, then I'm sure. So <laughs> right now we are we have the questions one and two on the screen. Mm-hmm. Anyone has any comments to them? What do the, what happens if you click the little bubbles? The that's little... for I think that's for commenting here in the so that's the preview of the survey. So you can uh, okay. leave comments to whoever set it up. So, so that's for the bubbles. Though I don't think they will be on the on the final survey. Yeah. Do we think it's fine that it's only a single option for Kubernetes version? Or do you think some people might be running multiple versions? That's a good yeah, question. I think they definitely might. Okay, said... so shall I, shall I leave comments based on what we're coming up with? Yeah. Do they have to answer every question or can they leave it blank if they don't know? That's a good question. I don't know off the top of my head. But let's go through the questions and then we can see what happens when I press them. Okay, so anything else to the question one or two? Okay, moving on to questions three and four. Are you still reading it or is that no comments? I don't have any comments. Some of the answers on three aren't quite um, grammatically right, are they? Once new Kafka version is added, should it be once a new Kafka version is added? But I don't know if we mind. Apparently we don't mind. Don't look at me, anyone. I have no idea which one, which way is correct. <laughs> <laughs> I can feed that pack. Also, I mean, this is definitely like nitpicking now, but the fourth answer on question four has a full stop, but none of the other answers do. Okay, noted. But apart from that, it's good to me. I presume we didn't want, I can't remember what we had in our doc. I presume we didn't want people to be able to specify if they choose other oh and actually how often do you upgrade 
should they be able to pick more than one? Because they might upgrade with every released version or they might upgrade when it adds a new feature and when a Kafka version is added or something. I think- How can you, how can you do all of these at the same time? Well, you might say, if Strimzy adds a valuable feature, I'll upgrade. And also if they add a new Kafka version, I'll upgrade. I think when you think about how these are going to be analyzed, though, I don't think we care in that level of detail. Okay. I guess we want them to pick the one that they do the most often. Yeah. And I think that's what they do naturally without a sort of a specific prompt to do that. Yeah. L likewise with the other. Yeah, sure, we could add a text box, but then we've got no intention of doing any sort of further analysis of, of it. It's not going to change what we do or how we run the project. Yeah. I mean, it, it cool. possibly might if everyone ticked other, but that seems really unlikely. Yeah, that seems fair. So are we on to five and six now? Okay, moving to five and six. We if we suddenly switch to we instead of I in the answers. Where were you, Kate, the previous times we've gone through this? I, I don't know. I, don't, I swear I looked at them last time in the Google Doc as well and didn't notice. I feel like it's now it's in the formal thing. It's easier to spot somehow. I don't know. I swear I helped review a previous version and added some comments. I guess that to some extent applies to the first question as well, where like two options are I and then switch to my organization. I, th I think it's okay in terms of like, it might be that you don't use it, but you're aware your organization uses it. Yeah. Uh, but... Well, no, actually you're right, yeah. Yeah, it's it's not like I have problem with the, my organization, but it's it's really just another way, another word for we. Yeah. Whereas the first two options have just I, right? So that's more what I'm wondering. I that one I can kind of understand because once you get to like talking about production, you wouldn't say like I'm using it in production. You would say my organization's using it in production. Um. And the second one should be like, I'm using it locally as a developer, I guess. I think that one's okay. I wonder if the reason we've ended up with we in number five is because the, the question is we introduced, whether that's slipped in somehow. Yeah, I think we'll change five to I, that makes most sense to me. Okay. Do you want to check that the ranking works? Just like have a go. At I've, I've done that already, but okay. by all means, it, give it a it, go. But it worked fine for me. It works quite nicely. You can either kind of do that through the select boxes, or you can just re rearrange it, and it will kind of auto fill the values. Yeah, that's cool. It's a nice user experience, I think. I guess if we're nitpicking, GitHub's got different capitalization on the one that's currently in second versus the one that's currently in sixth. Yeah. But yeah, apart from that, that's good. I can tell you're writing a book. <laughs> I spent too much time looking at words. Maybe that's why. Maybe last time I reviewed this, we hadn't got that far through the book yet, so. Possibly that's it, yeah. I've been honed <laughs> to spot things. Okay, are we on to seven and eight now? Yep. There's another couple of random full stops in there. 
in seven. Yeah, uh, okay, anything on good. nine and ten? No, it looks good. Does anyone other than Kate and the Jakob have anything to say? You are muted if you are trying to speak, Tom. Uh, my only comment was, what do you miss the most in Strimzy? Um, and my first thought was, what have we taken away that people want back? But what does that question actually mean is, what do you think is the biggest missing feature in Strimzy? Is that what that means? Question eight. That is what it means. Um, and we could reword it if people think that would be clearer. I'm not sure it matters. You could just uh, add the word feature. What feature do you miss the most in Strimzy? Yeah. Well, that still applies the same thing as what Tom just said. <laughs> it's been somewhat longer since I wrote my thesis, so I'm less, less nitpicky <laughs> about these things. I love question nine as well. It's not actually tethered to Strimzy in any way. It's like, what bugs you the most? I don't know. Boris Johnson's pretty annoying. <laughs> Your name is not short. <laughs> Same as the they won't comment the illustrious, about the illustrious German German Prime Minister. Minister. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can look forward to uh, to some amusement for when we look at the answers for that one then. Yeah, I'm quite sure that Tom will now fill it in just to write there something about Boris Johnson. I know, pigeons are pretty annoying too. I might, I might put that down. Okay, I think we're done then. The only last thing I think we said we'd do is to see if we can submit it without the... Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Does that can. work? Okay, cool. <laughs> At least in the preview we can. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's it, I guess. Okay, anything new on incubation? I'm afraid not this week. Um, Paolo can't be here, but he did mention to me earlier that he's uh, not made any progress on. We, we just want to go through the, um, have a look at the, the guidance around um, due diligence um, that the CNCF have to make sure that we can um, answer the questions that are going to be asked of us before we actually um, open the PR and start the process. Otherwise, We'll open the PR and start the process and then be asked a bunch of questions and not have answers sort of ready to go. So it seems like a sensible um, thing to do first. So we're, we're still um, waiting on that at the moment. I think it's good to understand what the questions will be, but I think you will probably get another six months to prepare the answers before the yeah, questions I mean, it, are asked. Yeah, I think partly that's true it does depend on what the questions are as to whether we can answer them at this point um that's true but i think just sort of uh being prepared as prepared as we can i think makes sense okay that's the end of the agenda any other business anything else anyone wants to raise i thought be worth sharing if anyone's watching the recording of this and isn't aware it's kafka something next week and if anyone wants to contribute to strimsy there'll be a few people around at kafka summit so please come find us and ask questions about contributing to strimsy so i guess none of you will be i guess people can ping you on on slack twitter and so on or asked about you on the Red Hat boot and they will probably 
find you somewhere. Yeah, the Red Hat booth will, I guess, know where people are. Um, I think the session that I'm doing with Mikhail is on the Monday, I want to say 4 p.m. UK time. I don't know when your talk is, Tom. Is it Tuesday? Mine's on the Tuesday. Yeah. So, yeah, feel free to come see us at our talks or come say hi at the Red Hat um, stand. And, yeah, we can help people with any Strimsy questions or if they want to start contributing or anything. Kate, Tom, Mikael, anyone else? I'll be there. Uh, maybe we can also tweet about it on Monday morning or something like that. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Can, if I forget about it, can someone of you ping me on Hangouts or Slack about it? Yeah, sure. I guess you might be busy with the actual conference, but yep. you will remember. Yeah, I'll try and remember. Um, I'll be moderating one of the rooms on the Monday morning. So if anyone wants to come say hi there as well. When does it when does it start on on Monday? I think nine is the first talks, maybe. No, nine I think it, time, I it's guess. a bit later, isn't it? I think there's a the keynote start sort of middle morning. Okay. I have to be in my room at nine to start hosting. So I don't know if that's um I don't know which sessions those are, whether they're doing a couple of sessions before the main keynote. Do we have anywhere? There is a schedule online. Okay. So it looks like the keynotes are starting at 11, but I guess there are other things happening from 9 to 10.30. So it's training programs, but I'm not sure what that means. Yeah, I was, I was wondering if you should link to some of the talks, but I don't think any of the talks are directly about Streamsy, so it's more about the, the people. Yeah, I think in our talk, we'll probably give a shout out to Strimzy's Kafka Connect CRs, but we won't talk about it in much depth. Yeah, so maybe better to just give your names in the tweet, if you don't mind, and then, yeah, people can find the, find the talks you have and find you afterwards, for example, if they want. Sounds good. Okay, uh, you know what? Let's set the reminder for Monday. And that way I should not forget about it. Okay, anything else? If not, then I guess that's it for today. So thanks for joining and see you around, everyone. Bye. Thanks, folks. Bye now. See ya. Bye.